In the book of Jonah, you find one of the greatest revivals in all of Scripture. Jonah chapter number 1. We'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Let's pray. Our Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing tonight. We thank you for the sweet spirit of God here tonight. We thank you for the love of God displayed here tonight and the love of the brethren one for another. God, we thank you for the good testimonies. Was not one testimony, Lord, every account given where the redeemed of the Lord said so was said to the honor and praise and glory of our darling Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for allowing us to be in this place. Thank you for this place you have provided on this little hill. Thank you for the work you have done in this place over the years. Thank you, Father, for being the Lord of this place and for showing up time and time again in your house when your people come to worship you. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes. You'd certainly put a hedge about us. Lord, I don't understand all that transpired this morning, but I know there was an odd spirit here. And God, I know the devil's hard at work trying to keep folks from being saved. Lord, I pray for those that were in attendance this morning unsaved. God, wherever they are now, something that was said or done in the service is bringing conviction to their soul that, God, we might see them born again. Lord, I pray, even as the devil hates and desires to keep people from being saved, he hates your people, and he desires to keep them from having victory in their life. And so, Father, I pray tonight you'd bind him, bind the powers of hell. And I pray that, Lord, you'd give us liberty in the, in the sanctuary of God and help us from the Scriptures that we might draw closer to God than we've ever been in our life. Now, Father, I pray you put a watch guard about my lips and my mind. Help me to be the mouthpiece of God tonight. Help me to say everything that you desire for me to say. And God, help me not to say anything contrary to the very will or word of God. The Lord, help us to be direct. Help us, Lord, to preach with boldness and with love. And God, I pray you'd be glorified and magnified. And I pray when the final amen of this service is said and done, that true revival would break out in our hearts and we'd see Jesus Christ high and lifted up. Bless what has thus been said and done and get again glory to your glorious name. Well, thank you for what you do, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to several things tonight. We'll get to the message. I want you to notice, first of all, the designation of God. In verse number 2, we find God says to Jonah, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. I want you to notice God's designation is clearly communicated. He didn't uh, waver in anything he said. He wasn't confusing in what he said. He made it very clear to Jonah, get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, cry against it because their wickedness is come up before me. It has been clearly communicated. It is very concisely communicated. It's not an overwhelming message. It wasn't something that Jonah had to go and spend three years and read a bunch of commentaries trying to figure out what God said. It was very, very concise. It uh, wasn't overwhelming at all. Mm, we can take any of these children, it's coming right out of Sunday school class, read that verse to them, and they'll understand God wanted Jonah to go down there and preach to them folks in Nineveh. It's not real, real difficult to understand. It was clearly communicated. It was concise. Uh, 
But notice that God didn't give Jonah an out. It was to be carried out. He was to go and preach to Nineveh. I said one of the greatest revivals that's recorded in Scripture happened in Jonah chapter number 3, but it almost didn't happen, Brother Josh, because the one who received the message didn't want to go give the message. Can I say, the Lord walked through here this past week. The Lord breathed on this place this past week. God showed up every service this past week. God touched the singing. God touched the testimonies. Uh, but God touched the men of God uh, that stood and said, Thus saith the Lord. Uh, every message was powerful. Uh, every message was impactful. Uh, every message was needed. Uh, but like Jonah, some of you didn't get the message. Some of you have a disconnect. Now listen, I'm not going to be ugly. I could be very ugly. I don't know when I started announcing revival, but it was back in January sometime. I know some had to ask even before that. I know the brother Ron, after our last revival in October, said, Preacher, when's the next one? I got him the dates. And others uh, wanted the dates of revival. Uh, and starting in January on a regular basis, I was announcing revival meeting. Who was coming? Uh, 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 it was in the bulletins. Uh, and yet, revival come, and folks had made other plans. Revival didn't start on Monday. Revival started Saturday night. Where were you? Hmm? And there were folks... Even though the message for months was clearly communicated. Even though the message was very concise, not overwhelming. We're having a revival. And even though it was to be carried out, some didn't. We sit here tonight. Great meeting, but no revival. We see the designation of God. Now notice the disregard for the message. That's where some of you fell. In verse 3. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Even though it was clearly communicated and concise and to be carried out, Jonah said, okay, Lord, and he heads the opposite direction. If we had a map, you'd see Nineveh's here and Tarshish is on the other side of the world over here. He literally went in the opposite direction. We announced revival meeting. Now I understand there are people who have to work. I understand there were things that were out of people's control. God understands that. But some of you got on the wrong boat. Some of you went the wrong direction. Some of you, instead of drawing nigh to God that he might draw nigh to you, you decided you was going to do it your way and God was going to have to just live with it. You showed up in the service late. You showed up when you wanted to, when you didn't want to. Uh, 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 some of you uh, uh, planned trips and took trips and did all kinds of things instead of being in the house of God. And there is no revival. I watched some of you throughout the week God's a-bouncing all over this place. you sitting there like a knot on the log because you's on the wrong boat. Some of you talk a good game. Oh, we want revival, preacher. But you wasn't broken in the altar begging God for it. You's on the wrong boat. You's headed to Tarshish. You're not where you want to be. You're not where you're supposed to be. You're going on down to uh, 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 to Joppa and getting far away from where God wants you. No revival. People, preacher, I want you to pray about revival continuing. Well, why don't you get in on the one we got? Hmm? I mean, how much did God have to do?
come in today and there was an odd spirit here. You know why? Because some of you checked out when Cody checked out. And the rest of you checked out when Sydney checked out. Hmm? I don't know how many times the Lord knows that I've said that it's not about the messenger, it's about the message. But yet, Brother Cody left town, some of you left with him. Hmm? Listen, I don't bring any bad preachers in here. Never have. But I also don't bring prima donnas in here. We're not to worship the man. We're to worship the Lord. Some of you are on the wrong boat. There was a disregard for the message of God. Why should we continue on having services when you haven't done what God's already preached? Hmm? We see the designation of God, the disregard for the message. He got on the wrong ship. Then we find what happens. And the same thing's going to happen to some of you all starting this week. There's a downward spiral. Look at verse 3 said that he rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went, what's that next word? Down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare thereof and went, what's the next word? Down. Look down at verse 5, second part of that verse. But Jonah was gone where? Down. It was a downward spiral. Preach one time on down, down, down. Some of you headed that way. God brought you to the table of God last week and you didn't eat. You don't have enough strength for the journey, friend, and you're headed down, 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 even this very week because you didn't do business with God last week. You got on the wrong boat. One night, I don't remember what, what night it was, and Brother, Brother uh, Ray's leading a sing, and I look back and I see people making faces at babies in the, in the, in the sanctuary. We're supposed to be singing songs of praise unto God. Hmm? I see people making goo-goo eyes with babies. I see people uh, on their phones. I see people uh, uh, sitting there, uh, uh, their minds a million miles away from worshiping God. And I'm here to tell you, you're on the wrong boat. And this week, your life's going to spiral down, 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 and you're going to come in here Wednesday night boo-hooing about how rough it is and how bad it is. No, you brought it on yourself. You got on the wrong boat. I want you to notice the danger of disobedience. Look at verse 4. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid, and they cried every man unto his God, little g, and cast forth wares that were in the ship of the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down in the sides of the ship, and he lay, and he was fast asleep. It isn't amazing. God sends judgment, and Jonah doesn't even care. He's not even aware that God's against him. He's laying down there in the ship asleep. He's probably saying, boy, God's good. And all those around him's lives are in jeopardy because he's been disobedient to God. And some of y'all didn't mind God this week. You weren't obedient to God this week. You were in attendance, and with your lips you did honor him, but your heart was far from him. You wasn't broken in the altar. You wasn't, didn't do business with God all week. And those around you are being in jeopardy because of your disobedience. I want you to see Jonah's decision to die. Look at verse 12. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you, for I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Well, that's the first honest thing Jonah does in the whole thing. When he realizes, they come down, they get him, say, Wait a second. All this is because of you. And he comes face to face, Yep, it's because of me. I'm supposed to be in Nineveh, but I'm on this boat. And so Jonah says, Tell you what, just pick me up, throw me off in the sea. That'll solve the problem. Now here's, here's modern day Christianity if I've ever seen it. 
Rather than get right with God, we just say, no, just God kill me. I don't want to go on, God. I just want to die, God. God don't want you to die. God wants you to get right with Him. And why in the world would God let you die and bless you to get to go to heaven when you're out of His will? What's to die? God's not going to kill him. Why? Because he's such a great preacher? No, God's not going to bless him to enjoy all the benefits in the boat of God when he is in total disobedience. You know what your problem is? You're sucking your thumb like a little two-year-old in a candy store, can't have the candy, and you're sitting there uh, blaming God for your messed up life, and you oh, God, kill me. No, God wants you to get right with God. I want to preach with this thought tonight. I want to preach on a fate worse than death. A fate worse than death. Say, boy, preacher, this is real positive after revival meeting. Well, if you'd had revival, we wouldn't be running this way. Hmm? Can I say a fate worse than death is when, first of all, one becomes in tombed in God's wrath look at verse number 17 now they picked Jonah up and they threw him in the sea kudos to them get rid of that backslidden, backslidden Baptist just throw him out of ship get rid of him huh well it'd be good if we could do that sometimes but I'm glad God's long suffering it's not our job to cast judgment but notice what God does here he wants to die God said nope Look at verse 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. He said, I thought it was well. It was big enough to swallow him. Hmm? Great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Read on chapter 2. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. Too late. Hmm? You can't wait till you're in the whale's belly and, and, and get right with God no something, something's got to transpire here you've made your bed now you're going to lie in it hmm? what he said in verse number 2 and, I, and said I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord and he heard me and out of the belly of hell cried I and thou hearest my voice notice that he is now entombed in the wrath of God he says I'm in hell hmm See, when we're disobedient, we refuse to get right, we get on the wrong boat, we play games with the things of God, we honor God with our lips, but our heart's not in it, we go through the motions, uh, 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 we waste God's time, we hinder the church, we hinder everybody around us uh, because we refuse to get right with God, we uh, 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 become better actors in Hollywood, we get to think of where... Uh, uh, fooling everybody or we get to just going through the motion thinking nobody cares and I'm not hurting anybody but myself wrong you're hurting everybody around you you're hurting the church uh, and we think uh, oh well oh well oh well there is a price to be paid uh, in not doing business with God uh, and God entombs him in God's wrath uh, my dear friends and listen uh, 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 I may make you mad at me from time to time, but I don't want God to be mad with me. Uh, I don't want God to be angry with me. Uh, when God lowers the hammer of His wrath in our lives, uh, it's no quick fix, friend. Uh, and Jonah said uh, it was like being in hell. Can you imagine uh, uh, the acid in the stomach of that fish? Uh, how it uh, 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 is breaking down everything that that fish eats uh, and that whale is eating. Uh, and there lies Jonah uh, in the midst of all that acid, uh, in the midst of all the nastiness that thing has ate. Uh, uh, it going up uh, to the top of the sea and then down to the bottom of the sea, uh, rising up and going down. Uh, he don't know if it's daylight or dark, uh, don't know if it's up or down. Uh, and he's in the midst of all that nastiness. Uh, you too would feel like you're in hell. Uh, and friend, you might be headed to a roller coaster ride with God. Uh, you might not know which, uh, 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 the, if the light of day is falling on you. Uh, you might not know which way is up. Uh, my friend, you may too be facing uh, things that make you feel like you're in hell. Amen. Why would God bless your life when he brings you to the brink of what you need and you head the opposite way? Hmm? He was entombed in God's wrath. You know why, Brother Clint, some people never have victory? 
because they've never done business with God. And they're in this tomb of God's wrath. There is no victory. There is no joy. There is no hope. Some of you, it's been a long time since I've seen any peace in your life, any joy in your life, any hope in your life. Uh, it could be uh, uh, for revival after revival and service after service, God's are speaking. And you've gotten on the wrong boat. Now, your life is just get up, go through the motions, no hope, no joy, no peace. Everything around you is falling apart. Uh, Everything you love uh, is working against you. And everything going on in your life is a mess. It's a dangerous thing messing with the things of God. He'll take the pleasure of what you found pleasure in away. He's entombed in God's wrath. I want you to notice there's a fate worse than death. Not only being entombed in God's wrath, but also when one becomes entangled in their mind. Look in chapter 2, verse number 5. The waters compassed me about even to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I don't know about you. I haven't been in the ocean much. But seaweed's nasty. He's got his head wrapped up in seaweed. Mm -mm. can I say something you've heard me say this a million times the battlefield of the Christian is when the devil attacks your mind can I say as we sit here tonight things are different than they were 40 years ago we have been so sissified in America and we have filtered things into our minds and conditioned ourselves to where we can't cope with realities anymore the greatest generation was that world war ii generation when our boys 17 18 years old went out and took on uh, uh, over there uh, uh, the germans and we defeated the germans and today you can't even get 16 17 18 year old boys go to mcdonald's and work for 15 dollars an hour but we've got a generation after generation that has been so conditioned to how weak we are that it's messed in our minds. America's went to pot. Uh, they filter it every day about racism and racism and racism. You know where racism exists in the media? It really does. But they want everybody to be at odds with one another and against one another. Listen, I was not a Bill Clinton fan, but when Bill Clinton was president, at least they worked on both sides of the aisles and they got some things done for America. There's so much division between uh, 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 whatever political party. There's so much division uh, 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 between leaders and followers. There's so much divisions uh, against uh, right from wrong. Uh, 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 they, they're against the police and they're for the criminals burning down the cities. I mean, it's a mess. But can I say in our churches, it's just as messy. You've got a whole book full of promises, over 30,000 promises, that if you read and filtered in your life, you would live in victory tonight. Amen. But yet, you spend so much of your time with focusing on yourself instead of what thus saith the Lord. And then for your little soulless, you've... Uh, jumped in the lap of this contemporary Christian movement or listening to Joe Osteen uh, and you've been told uh, uh, how special you are and how wonderful you are and God loves you and nothing bad's ever going to happen to you uh, that when reality of life hits you you don't know how to handle it my granddaddy pastored the same church for some 33 years and he couldn't pastor today not the way he did back then there's so many people sitting in the churches across America and they're full of depression 
They're full of uh, 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 disdain. They're full of all kinds of things going through their minds. Uh, God can't speak to their heart because their minds are full of junk. Uh, uh, they've let the devil tell them they're worthless and they're useless. Uh, they can't overcome. They can't have victory. Uh, I'm here to tell you, Brother Sidney's message uh, 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 Friday night. Uh, some of you need to set up that stone, that Ebenezer stone. Uh, put your foot down. Uh, uh, quit letting the devil in your mind. Uh, quit letting him take your places. Uh, and quit letting him dictate to you how to live. Uh, you're entangled in your mind. You know why you're entangled in your mind? Because you got on the wrong boat. You listen to yourself instead of God. You listen to the devil instead of God. You, you were headed to Joppa, not Nineveh. You're in the wrong place. It amazes me. Lord, help me. I ask him not help, help not say anything I wasn't supposed to say. You heard me pray that. It amazes me how everybody's for revival. Everybody for Brother Cody. Everybody for everybody go and get you. <laughs> till, till somebody has a bad day at work. Until their plans change. Everything's great. So they say, no, you can't have off. You got to come into work. Boom. Hmm. Some of you walked around here like I went up and kicked your puppy. I'm telling you, we should have kicked the walls out of this place. We had more God walk through here in the last week than most churches will ever know. And you, look at yourself tonight. You have no more victory or revival or joy than you did before the meeting started. Because you got on the wrong boat. Your mind's entangled. Brother Sidney said it both nights. You're listening for fire to fall from heaven and rain to fall and earthquakes to fall. and all. God's already said what you need to hear. Your mind's all jacked up. Can I say, people become entangled with doubt. Can I help you with something? Doubt's a tool of the devil. When I was lost, I never doubted about whether I was saved or not. I was lost. But after you get saved, that's when the devil wants you to doubt whether or not you're saved. Because if you got doubt, you don't have victory. Your mind's all messed up. Huh? I don't, I, I don't doubt my name's Doug Foster. Why would I doubt if I'm saved or not? The devil's trying to rob your joy. That's what he does. People get full of doubt. Oh, uh, if I heard this once, I've heard, I'm sitting here. <coughs> Sick. Preacher, I don't know if I'm supposed to do this. Then don't do it. God don't give you the spirit of fear. He gives a clear direction. Well, preacher, I don't know if I'm... Well, then don't do it. Don't bug me. Don't mess my mind up. Just because yours is. Huh? Your minds are tangled with doubt. Then your minds are entangled with disgrace, shame. It's another tool of the devil. It wants to make you guilt-ridden. Read Romans 8.1. There is now therefore no condemnation in them. Walk after the Spirit. Huh? I want to tell you something. He wants you to feel shameful. He wants you to feel unworthy. He wants you to feel like you're lower in a snake's belly. That's what he is. Uh, you're a child of the king. Uh, you've been saved by the good grace of God. Uh, you've been robed in his righteousness. Uh, you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, you are not in, of this world or the rudiments of this world. Uh, you are of that heavenly place. Uh, your citizenship's there. Your conversation's there. Uh, hey, you're not a disgrace. Uh, you're you're the beloved of God. Amen. But he wants you to feel shameful. He wants to make you ashamed you're a child of God. Listen. My children, I'm proud of them. It would take something very grave for me to be ashamed of them. And I want to tell you something. It would take something very Disgraceful for God to be ashamed of you. He saved you. You're His child. He loves you. He's got the doors open at the house even when you're in the pig pen. I'm telling you, God's for you. So the shame and the disgrace doesn't come from God. Conviction will, but not disgrace. And I say this, 
your minds become entangled with disappointment. Some of you are disappointed. You didn't get to sing. If you'd had the right spirit, you would have got to sing. Some of you are disappointed when Brother Cody left. Well, he's coming back. You got Facebook, you can watch him preach all the time. Huh? I know he's your little hero. You're full of disappointment. Some of you's disappointment. Brother Bobby didn't get to come. Well, I hated he didn't get to come. But there was a reason. Hmm? God's in control of this thing. Huh? We make the best plans that we can, but God's the ultimate one with the ultimate plan. But you get full of disappointment because your mind's all messed up. You're not thinking right. You're not to think about tomorrow this and tomorrow that. It's tomorrow. Take care of tomorrow. You ought to be thankful for today. And just bless the Lord for His goodness today. You see, there's a fate worse than death when your mind's all jacked up. And I say this, not only entombed in God's wrath and entangled in your mind, there's a fate worse than death, and that's when you become engulfed with pride. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before fall. That's one of the seven things God hates, is pride. Hmm? And I say, folks engulfed with pride, that's, that's a fate worse than death. First of all, they become hard. You know why some people won't get right with God? You're too hard-hearted. I've got bad news. God does know how to break you. And you don't want that. He may take a child. He may take a grandchild. He may take something else very dear to you. God knows how to break your heart. He knows how to knock the pride out for, out of you, friend. Mm. They become hard. Then they become haughty. They think they know what's best for them. Well, all that works for you, preacher, but that won't work for me. Well, you better make it work for you. Because you don't know what's best. You don't even know what's in your own stinking heart. The heart's deceitful. No man knoweth it. Hmm. Become haughty. I watch people when you preach to them. Full of pride. Haughty. Then I find this about people that are engulfed with pride. They become huffy. They're real touchy. You get on their sin, they're going to let you know. They don't like it. Huh? They're really sensitive when they're being rebuked. Who do you think you are? I'm a nobody. But I'm a nobody that God thought was somebody. And he saved me. And he gave me this message two weeks ago. You're welcome. I got this sitting in a hotel room down at Jerry Alts. You see, some of you just too touchy. Oh, Brother Doug come up with this today. No, I was in there and was at my house. I was snoring and sucking flies. They'll tell you, I didn't get this today. I ate enough ham to, to, to sink the Titanic, and I went and went out in a coma. Huh? Just trying to tell you. Some of you are engulfed in pride tonight. Got too much pride to admit you wasn't right during revival, and you're not going to get right tonight. Well, you're headed down, 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 friend. Hmm? You're on the wrong boat. You need to get on that sweet ship of Zion. There's a lot of honey on that boat. There's a lot of goodness on that boat. huh? Even with an odd spirit here this morning, there were some folks on that sweet ship of Zion, they were still worshiping regardless of the odd spirit. huh? Mm. Do not miss this next point. There's a fate worse than death. When you're on the wrong boat, you're emboldening Satan's agenda. You're becoming a tool of the devil. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 10.8, He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it, and whosoever breaketh a hedge, a serpent shall bite him. 
Some of you got the venom of Satan in you. You broke the hedge of God's protection. You broke the hedge of God's blessing. You've decided you're doing it your way. You'll show up when you want to, do what you want to, don't do what you want to. You're going to do it your way. You've broken, and now the venom of Satan has entered you, and you are being used of him. You know why some of your family aren't getting right? Why some of your family don't come with you? Why some of your family don't have any respect for you? They've watched you. Hmm? I don't know about you. There ain't enough money in this world to, 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 to pay me to do away with what my little girl said over there a little bit ago. She's never seen her daddy waver. Money can't buy that, friend. Here's the indictment. How come that's not being said about you? You might have broken a hedge. Hmm? You do not want to be emboldened to Satan's agenda, giving him credence. We're to worship the Lord. We're to give praise to the Lord. We're not to give praise to the devil. But if you don't get on the right ship, that's what your life is doing. There's a fate worse than death. I don't want to face Jesus Christ with him telling me, you did more for the devil than you did for me. I'm almost done, and some of you have already checked out. That's all right. I'm going to preach it anyway. There's a fate worse than death. It's becoming an embarrassment. I don't want to be an embarrassment to my Lord nor to his church. There's some, they become an embarrassment to the Father. Some become an embarrassment to their family. There's some that's become an embarrassment to the flock of God. That's a, that's a hard pill to swallow when you become an embarrassment. When you show up and other people just kind of migrate away from you because you're an embarrassment. You've let everybody down. Listen, Paul said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. It's only by the grace of God we're not all an embarrassment. I'm telling you, that's a fate worse than death. Having to live with the fact that you've embarrassed the Lord and his church. It's a fate worse than death. But it's not all bad. I have good news tonight. There is an escape. You can get on the right ship. You can right the things that are wrong in your life. Look with me in chapter number 2, verse 7. Make no mistake. Jonah got on the wrong boat. Jonah went in the belly of the whale. Jonah felt like he was in hell. Jonah prayed the whole time he was there. Jonah didn't know if he was ever getting out of there. Look at verse 7. When my soul fainted within me. Might as well say right there he, he finally humbled himself. Hmm? He, he ran out of excuses and he got to the point where he was ready to really do some business with God. He said, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. Kind of like that, uh, that song that the, that the Lancaster bit. He got down there in the, in the, in the swine, with feeding with the swine. He said, but I remembered the Father. Hmm? Huh? You, you, get, you get to that hog pen, you stay there long enough, all of a sudden you might just remember the Father, huh? said, And I remember the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thy holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Hey, he starts thanking God and praising God while he's still in the belly of the whale. Are you listening to he said, hey, I'm not going to forsake the mercies of God. I'm just going to start thanking him. I'm going to pay the vows that I promised him. I'm going to start worshiping and serving God even in the belly of the whale. Uh, he said that. Uh, and look at verse 10. And the Lord spake unto the fish, uh, and it vomited out Jonah upon dry land. There is an escape. Hmm? What a blessing. 
You might come out and smell like fish puke, but hey, you're out. Uh, God will clean you up then. Uh, but notice, in order to escape, you must recognize the error of your ways. All I've done tonight is try to point to you. You didn't get, you didn't get it. Revival didn't set down on you. You're not as holy as you think you are. You were in attendance, but you might have been on the wrong boat. I was just trying to get you to see. You didn't do business with God this week. Some of you did, but some of you didn't. You've got to recognize the error of your ways. Then you've got to repent. You've got to turn from your ways to His ways. You've got to cry, Lord, I'm going to worship you. If you don't forgive me, I'm still going to worship you because you're worthy of it. And turn from your mindset and turn to Him and start worshiping the Lord and then respect His will. I don't see where Jonah's complaining about being out of the belly, smelling like fish puke. You know what he does? He runs to Nineveh. And he preaches. He doesn't have the best spirit while he's there, and God sent revival anyway. But he did do what God told him to do. He respected the will of God. That means he complied, he obeyed, he performed, he did it. Let me ask you a question. Have you done the will of God this week? If you had, we'd be in revival. Some of you came. Thank you for coming. Some of you enjoyed the services. They were very enjoyable. But some of you didn't do, with, do anything with what you heard. That's why you're just as lumpy looking tonight as you was last Sunday night. That's why you're not swinging from the chandeliers if we had them. Because you didn't do anything with it. There's a fate worse than death. Don't stay on the wrong ship. I've done seen where that ends. It's not good. You might even be entombed in the wrath of God. There's an escape. Humble yourself. Pray. Turn from your wicked ways. Hmm? Then God will get to doing some business. And then respect His will and do what He tells you to do. Some of you, you might not be all the way on that ship, but you're headed that way. Turn around. Don't go down that road. Some of you, you've already started going down. You're spiraling. You know the way up? Get to your knees. Call on the Lord. Some of your minds have been jacked up all week. You know why? Because you haven't let the Lord in there. Hmm? Perfect peace have they whose mind has stayed upon the Lord. Your mind's not been on the Lord. You're telling on yourself. Hmm? If there be anything lovely, anything virtue, anything good report, think on these things. You've not been thinking on the things of God. That's why your mind's jacked up. You need to get that thing under submission. Say, Lord, that's the battlefield. That's where I'm under attack. God, I can't, but you can, and give it to the Lord. He'll help you. Hmm? He's no respecter of persons. He'll help you. Some of you, you're on the wrong boat. You need to get on the right, right boat. Some of you have been walking on your pooch mouth long enough. You need to do business with God. Some of you need to get broken. It's been a long time since you've been broken. You're never going to see the blessings of God when you've got that pride in your life. I've got two great words that God honors. I'm sorry. Hmm, that still works. Some are coming. You need to come. Come on. Let's all stand. Mr. Renee, come to the piano. There's a fate worse than death, friend. You don't want to head down that train. She's going to come play something. Let's pray. Father, thank you for helping us tonight. I know it's rough, Lord. Sometimes we need them messages. We're pie in the sky thinking everything's wonderful and we haven't done business with you. Help us tonight. Help us to truly seek your face. Help us to comply to your will. Lord, those that are hard, I pray they'd get broken. Lord, not under the hand of your wrath, but Lord, they'd look inwardly and admit and confess they're not what they should be. Those that are on the wrong ship, I pray they'd get on the right ship. Those that have been playing games, I pray, Lord, they'd get serious. 
Those that have had the pooch mouth, Lord, I pray they'd realize they don't deserve the goodness of God. God, just do a work around here tonight. Then do a work of revival in our midst. True revival doesn't happen during the meeting anyway. It happens in the weeks that follow. So God, do a work around here. We'll bless you for what you do. It's in the wonderful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.